Okay, welcome back to our channel. I am now back home from Austria, back here in London, and I'm on the road to recovery and introducing some more things into my training and my lifestyle, so we thought we would tell you all about those. Yeah, so the recovery process and the reintroduction of some training has been going really well. Obviously, since being in Austria, we reintroduced swimming again and we started to ramp up the strength training, but not just upper body, actually bringing in some lower body work, some real stability work around the ankles and feet and also the hips and glute strength as well. So as that's been going really well, the team at Red Bull were confident that I could start to introduce some cycling again. Oh no, I might have completed Swift. <laughs> it's getting serious, the headband's back. So I'm back on the bike. We are obviously still being fairly cautious. We're sticking to the turbo trainer at the moment just so that everything is controlled. But it's the bike, I'm just happy to be back on it. Uh, we can build this up pretty gradually and just check how the body feels all the way along the way. But again, cycling isn't an impact sport, so I imagine that the progression of load and time can probably go up quite quickly. Today, we're just keeping it fairly steady. I am gonna add in some higher intensity intervals, but they're gonna be really short and I'm just gonna manage them by how the body feels. So I can always pull them back or remove them entirely if the body just isn't feeling up to it. But just excited to be back on the bike, back on Zwift today, and yeah, we'll see how the legs feel. Obviously, in the same way that we did with the swimming and the aqua jogging and the gym work, we've just got to monitor the body. So the body has responded really well to swim, aqua jog and gym. That actually bringing in the bike in the same kind of way where we build it up gradually, in theory, should be absolutely fine. It's just going to be a case of being smart, building it up gradually and just listening to the body the whole way through the process. So to begin with, we are going to keep all of the riding indoors, so on the indoor trainer. That just means that if I feel anything, I can instantly stop, get off, address what's happening, whether that be, okay, a muscle's tightening up, I need to get on the foam roller, I need to stretch, or actually, it's really bad, we've just gotta stop. Hopefully we don't get to that point, but basically, on the indoor trainer, we can manage everything. I've got more data in front of me, so at the moment we want to keep the cadence quite high so that there's not a huge resistance going through the hips and the muscles. So the big focus for me is high cadence, short riding, just breaking it up. To begin with, I might only be riding for 20 to 30 minutes, getting off, walking around, letting the body kind of stretch out and then doing another 20 to 30 minutes. So kind of building it up like that, being super smart and not getting carried away is obviously I'm pretty excited to be back on the bike, but we've just got to be really careful with it, build it up in a smart way, and then it won't be too long before hopefully I'm back riding for longer durations. What is the cartoon where the evil person is- Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls, he's like Powerpuff Girls. Can we get a clip of that? Oh, that's the best
So it definitely felt like I'd spent a long time off of the bike. It's one of those things that obviously, swimming is my background, I've done it my whole life, so it doesn't take long for the swimming to come back. Whereas cycling, I've only done for five, six years, so it's still quite new to me. I still don't feel like an expert at cycling, so it definitely felt like a long time away from cycling and actually sitting on the saddle has become really uncomfortable. I might have to stop at some point, but chammy or so, it's been a while. <laughs> I obviously got used to it over the five, six years I've been riding, but I think I'm gonna have to get used to sitting on a saddle again, which isn't great news, but I'm sure we'll get there just yet by building it up gradually and seeing how it goes. Uh, worked out for a little bit. Uh, the more sore your legs are the more this hurts so my legs feel quite sore being very strict with my program so we're building things up very very gradually nearly every single morning I am doing some mobility work so really working on the areas that we found in Austria where I have quite a tight thoracic spine so we're trying to loosen that off I obviously want to keep my hips and glutes nice and loose and we're also doing quite a big rehab program around my feet and ankles to strengthen that up a big chunk of my training is still based around that kind of rehab work but now we're at the point where we can actually build in some real strength training as well because the little muscles are getting strong but now my big muscles need to be strong because I'm actually gonna start to introduce the bike again which requires those big muscles and I need to be strong for that. So we're starting to bring that in a bit more. <laughs> trying to be smart with the amount of toll that's going through my body because it's had such a long break we just need to be smart because whilst the hip is getting strong and looking really positive other things could get injured during this phase so it's quite a critical point to not go too mad in the build-up of training because I definitely don't want another injury I've spent enough time sidelined so I think I'm still being quite good at being patient because I feel like, well, I've had so much time off. What's the point in rushing back an extra week and actually taking more steps backwards? So patience is still the key, but I feel very positive that we're going in the right direction now.
been really, really fortunate to have teamed up with Henshaw Hyperbarics. I actually reached out to them after being kind of recommended by a lot of the specialists that something that could help speed up my injury and my healing would be to use a hyperbaric chamber. I've never had any experience with one before, but after doing some research, I saw that a lot of the top rugby players use them when they're trying to come back from injury. So I reached out to Henshaw and kind of explained the situation, said that I was going to be documenting my recovery and my rehabilitation and that their product could actually be really, really useful to me. So they have kindly loaned me a hyperbaric chamber, which I have been using twice a day, an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening. So far, so good, obviously without having x-ray vision I can't see how my hip is looking but obviously everything feels really good and as I'm building up the training I feel like this is going to be really useful to prevent any further injuries but also just make sure that my body is recovering that little bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it will work but I definitely, I think it'll be fine when it's pumped up I just was like oh I think I'd panic if someone like laid on it. I don't even know if I can do it. I literally don't. <laughs> I don't, Mum definitely well, could it, do it. It takes three or four minutes before yeah. you'd even be to a point of pressure that you yeah. couldn't just unzip straight away. Okay. So what we can do is zip you in and you can chill. Yeah. This will be compressing up. Yeah. Until that little knob goes past 20, you haven't yeah. really got an issue anyway. Yeah. So, and it takes probably four or five minutes to get to there. Okay. So if in that period of time you just get, I don't really like it, just open that up and we'll just unzip okay. it. Yeah, and that'll be there. Oh yeah, no, I've got that inside. Yes. Well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you right. can do that, and you can see that as well. Cool. Right. And it does get bigger. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Bye. Bye. basic terms and I feel like I probably won't get this 100% right but a hyperbaric chamber is basically the opposite of like an altitude chamber so you're actually getting more oxygen into your body and at high pressure this means more blood supply and to areas where you've got injuries or niggles getting more blood supply to them will only help that speed up the healing now that is probably the most basic ever kind of explanation of how a hyperbaric chamber works, but there is a lot of science to suggest that it helps with healing injuries. So having used things like the Exogen during my recovery as well, and I'm continuing to use that, basically there was a lot of science to back that. So if there's a lot of science to back something, then it's probably a good thing to try. And obviously at this point with my injury, I'm pretty much willing to try anything that might help speed up my recovery and allow me to get back to training and racing quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Just give them birth to myself. <laughs> I'm fixed. <laughs> Woo! I know I couldn't go in a submarine after going in there. <laughs> and surprisingly, like you press on it and it it's solid, like it's not moving. So yeah. so it feels more like like a, a room. Or yeah, sport, rather than like when it's like that, you're like, oh God, what if someone like sat on it? They're yeah. going to be squishing me. Yeah. But I think even if someone sat on it when it's fully inflated, nervous. it's not going to go down. No. So no. yeah. I think the worst they could probably do is take those things out and roll you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> roll me around. Cool. Good. Good. Mommy. So in terms of timeline and back to racing, which is the question that I get asked daily by people, when am I going to be back? When am I going to be racing again? There's still no clear timeline on that. I think the key thing that with all of this is I'm trying not to put pressure on myself because 
the more pressure to kind of heal quicker, I feel like it's only gonna add stress and stress doesn't do any good for the body. Ultimately, too much stress is what caused my injury in the first place. So I'm just trying to stay pretty chill, take each day, each week as it comes, kind of assess my progress week by week, obviously talking with the experts at Red Bull, my husband Reese, my coach Dan, we can kind of start to lay down a realistic plan. But at the moment, we're not really at a point where we can say, actually, Lucy, by this month, you're gonna be back to being racing because I haven't kind of brought back running yet. I haven't brought back enough things into my training to really know where I'm at. So week by week, we will assess. Obviously, I'm itching to be back racing. There has been so many inspiring performances happening. Like It just seems that like every weekend there's so many races and all of it is kind of motivating me to get back. But yeah, I kind of still have to continue to be patient. But no one more than me wants to be back on the start line. So watch this space. I will be back at some point. So why would I slow it? Make it rain on them, bust a the band, then you throw it. We were steady having it, even at our lowest. High speed roll, run and keep my motor going. Hey, hey, people feel away, but they don't show it. Gotta watch the people that surround you, that you grow it. They be coming around you with some plans to steal your moment. Soon as I she be like, baby, where you going? Never slowing down, it's enough to go around. Yeah, you probably knew it's then, but really, you don't know it's now. Blood is showing tell, but all my know me well. It was either chase a dream or go to jail, but none of us ain't going hey, we going back to back on them like we here, we and we Riley. This that back in my back flow, we back again so highly. This that back in my back flow, we back to change the climate. This that back in my back flow, we bring the force like Tommy. Back in my... Obviously, as I start to ramp up my training a little bit more, I've still had a little bit of free time. So we had a nice little break where we went down to Somerset. We actually finally brought out the pizza oven, which we have owned for exactly one year and not used. So it had its debut, which was at Uni Pizza Oven. The results were mixed and we've definitely learned some lessons that you don't put too many toppings on them. Actually, me and Reese absolutely loved them, but they were still a little bit doughy, the pizzas. So we need to go for higher heat in the oven, less toppings, and then I think we'll be good. So we need to have another experience with the pizza oven. But for a first time, I think we did okay. And most triathletes love pizza, so you can't really go wrong with them. So yeah, that was a really nice kind of just another little break to get away. Reese was obviously still training quite a lot. He's got some racing coming up pretty soon. So I've kind of been trying to support him as much as possible, even as I start to build up my own training because he's training super hard at the moment and i'm excited to see him start racing pretty soon oh my god this is <laughs> okay right prayers <laughs> wish for the best Sorry, hopefully no. it comes out is, is, is it soaked is it really, really oh no <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's magic! It's magic! <laughs> Look at this. Okay, thanks for watching this video. That's been another little update of where I am and how my injury is progressing. You may have noticed something quite exciting in this video or interesting. Um, there will be more on this in a future video if you have any idea what I'm talking about. As always, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos coming very soon. Explicit content. <laughs> <laughs> the blurry square.